Hello, kids. Come join me over by the fire. It's the beginning of another year, and you know what that means. It's time for my 2020 in review video. Now, I won't be going on and on about how 2020 was the worst year ever because I'm not a moron. If you compare 2020 to the rest of human history, it was amazing. You'd have to be a spoiled idiot to post on the internet from your home with heat and a fridge full of food that 2020 was the worst year of all time. So get over yourselves, you crybabies. But before I bring you my worst movies list, I thought I'd briefly mention a few that I liked. Now, I don't have Netflix because I don't support the pedophilia, so if you're wondering why your favorite movie, Cuties, isn't on here, well, uh, there it is. My favorite movie from last year was Let Him Go, starring Diane Lane and Kevin Costner. It was a basic stripped-down kidnapping revenge movie that felt like something Clint Eastwood might have made before his generic biopic phase of his career. The characters were fully realized, and the relationship between Costner and Lane was believable and surprisingly moving at times. Diane Lane gave my favorite performance of the year, and her character was an actual strong female character as opposed to a strong female character. Pixar had a couple of winners this year with Onward and Soul. Color Out of Space starring Nicolas Cage and Come to Daddy starring Elijah Wood were crazy midnight movie madness. And The Vast of Night was a low budget take on the flying saucer genre that got by on its great performances and strong atmosphere. Now what you've all been waiting for, the garbage. Number 10 is Jiu Jitsu. Despite the valiant efforts of Nicolas Cage and Tony Jaa, this movie was a subpar Predator ripoff with a nonsensical plot. It had a lot of elements for potential B-movie fun, but it fell short in every way and definitely wore out its welcome. Number 9 is The Haunting of Margam Castle. If you've seen any movie with the words The Haunting in its title, then you've seen this film already and done better. This movie was scare-free and full of useless filler to stretch it out to feature length. It also decided to rip off the final shot of the the Shining, which is quite unwise since The Shining is pretty much the most parodied movie of all time at this point. Number 8 is Capone. I didn't review this one, but wow, this was bad. Tom Hardy gave a laughably overacted performance as Al Capone in his final days, and not helping things either was the fact that director Josh Trank wanted to make this into a, like a body horror movie for some reason. Anyway, it's just a complete mess of tonal inconsistency, and you'll probably feel more confused than anything watching this. Number seven is Don't Look Back, which was a really boring horror story about a bunch of unlikable people getting what they deserve. It's a watered-down version of I Know What You Did Last Summer or Final Destination with a really stupid twist ending. Number six is Ouija Shark. What can I say? It's, it's Ouija Shark. Maybe I'll review this one. Number five is Hard Kill, our annual terrible Bruce Willis movie. This was a flatline of a movie with poorly staged action and boring repetitive dialogue. The entire movie took place in a warehouse and Bruce Willis looked like he wanted to throw himself out the window. Number four is Two Graves in the Desert. Oh hey, you know what's worse than having your entire movie take place in a warehouse? Having it take place in the trunk of a car. Number three is American Scarecrow. Definitely the cheapest movie on this list. This one felt like a bunch of friends decided to run around a farmhouse and improvise a movie. No scares, but lots and lots of filler. There's no shame in short films, kids. Number two is Wingmen Under Siege. Ah yes, the Asylum Top Gun ripoff. Bad acting, cheap special effects, and the most cliche story you can think of. In short, it's an asylum film. I'll have to hold you over till Top Gun Maverick. And the worst movie of the year was... Ah, you know it already. It's Bulletproof 2. Now, this was the first 2020 movie that I reviewed, and I told you all the way back then that this was going to be my pick for the absolute worst movie of the year. Sure, American Scarecrow was cheaper. Sure, Wingman was more cynically made. And sure, Hard Kill had Bruce Willis in it. But no film made this year annoyed me more than this movie. Bulletproof 2 is so unfunny. So needlessly and aggressively crass that it made Bulletproof 1 look like Midnight Run. This was a nearly unwatchable film and I will gladly place it at the bottom of my 10 list. Well, there you go, kids. I hope you enjoyed this list and I'll see you in 2021 for the new quote-unquote worst year ever. Remember, if the negativity of the world gets you down, just come here on Nuke the Shark and we can laugh at a terrible movie together. Anyway, Happy New Year and I'll see you soon.